so as I mentioned, today's webinar is about email marketing uh, and working with newsletters in the system. Let's look at that part of the system. Uh, we're going to do that in the social area now. Uh, so if we click on social, uh, everything that we need for that part of the system is in here. Um, for actually composing an email, we'll do that in this area. Uh, for working with our email lists or people who are subscribed to it to like remove someone, we'll be going over details about how to work with that. Uh, you can also work with bulk uploads, and we'll be demonstrating that a little bit later today. But let's take a look at the emails themselves. If I click on the email section, um, it's easy to confuse this part of the system with your business email, especially if you're very new to all of this. What this part of the system is about is not your business email where you receive a, an email from someone and can reply to it. Uh, it. It doesn't work like standard email. This is a mass mailing solution. So if you need to send out 5,000 messages to a bunch of people and have that be a legitimate thing, uh, this is where you want to be. Um, or, you know, there are, there are third-party services that do this better than our system does, quite frankly. Uh, we don't have the resources or, or the finances to, to work at the same level that a company like ConstantContact.com can do or, or that someone like iContact.com. Uh, any of those big names will be able to do this kind of functionality better than we can. So if you're not getting the results from our system that you're looking for, please consider one of those alternatives. Uh, we, we do this more or less as a free service to you. So uh, we, we want to make this system work well for you, and we're, we're constantly working on improving it. But at the level that we operate with it, uh, it's not possible to do everything that they do. So um, bear that in mind going in. A um, couple of things that uh, that you want to bear in mind with this. First of all, it is mass mailing, so you're sending out to a whole bunch of people all at once. When you send out a mail like that, uh, it is not something that someone can respond to. They can't hit the reply button and get a message directly back to you based on what you send them. So it doesn't work like traditional email. This is email marketing. So a good example of what this is uh, is like when you receive something from Amazon.com, uh, if, you, if you're on their mailing list, or any of the big retailers. Um, you get a, a very attractive email. Usually it's, it's highly graphical and has lots of pictures in it and things like that. Um, and the address that it comes from usually says no reply at Amazon.com as an example. That's because you literally cannot reply to it and have it actually go to someone. Uh, these mass mailing solutions are send only uh, email services. All right. So when you're sending out, it's a good idea to set, and, and we'll go over the settings here a little bit later, but it's a good idea to set up the from email address that it's coming from as no reply at and then whatever your dot com is. Okay. And we're going to go over some reasons on, on why it's important to do it certain ways in there um, uh, when we talk about how those spam filters are behaving recently. Uh, as they're, they're being extremely aggressive in, in what they block out. All right, so let's take a look at some examples. Now, I, uh, this is a sample I think I, I composed when I worked on this uh, last time in the last um, mail out that I did. Uh, what we see here is a message that has no images. Uh, this is actually a table that's been set up that, uh, that has different colored backgrounds and different colors of text. Uh, it's still nice and colorful and, and, you know, obviously it's not a fully fleshed out <laughs> newsletter or anything, but it's the kind of thing that you could do and you can expect a message like this to safely be delivered uh, to pretty much everyone on your list. Um, there are a lot of rules that are going on right now that you need to be aware of about how to compose one of these so that it's going to get through. All right, uh, let's look at a template that we have, and I think I saved this. Uh, in your templates area, you can set it up so that you have uh, 
templates of different layouts for different kinds of mail outs. Like if you occasionally do um, like a monthly sale or something like that, uh, that's one thing that you can do. And you can have a template of that type of mail out so that it, it fits and works. Um, and you can, you can restart from the point that you last, like if you send out a July mail out for a, uh, a big July sale, for example, you could save that as a template so that the next time you need to make one of those uh, sale mail outs, you can, you can use that July mail out as your starting point. Um, so when the first time you use your template, it, it might look like something like this. Um, and this one has images in it, okay? And images have become a bad thing uh, in, um, in email marketing. Over the last few months, uh, the email marketing or the email spam filters on big providers like Yahoo and, and SBCGlobal.net and Earthlink and all of these providers, Comcast, uh, they have uh, across the board applied very strong email filters to block out more of the spam that comes through. Okay. Uh, spammers love using images in their emails. And so uh, for your emails to go through those filters uh, with a service like ours is not really a practical expectation anymore. It used to be, you know, just half a year ago. Uh, or, or maybe, you know, late last year. Um, messages like this one that have a header that looks like your website and, and ha that have images throughout the body, you could expect those to go through the filters just fine. With some email providers, it will still go through just fine. Uh, but I've seen AOL.com email addresses, Yahoo.com email addresses. Other major providers like that are applying these more stringent uh, email spam filters and are blocking out anything that comes in blindly with uh, with images in the body of the message and that's a sad development it means the the little guy can't really do uh, the powerful visual email marketing that we wish that we could um, big email or, or big retailers like Amazon use special uh, services that allow them to use whatever images they want and to mail out more or less as often as they want. Like from Papa John's, I get two or three emails a week. Every one of them is just full of graphics. Uh, and they know that I'm going to buy their pizza. <laughs> so, but they pay a lot of money for that level of marketing capability. Uh, and services like ours, even services like Eye Contact, uh, are not getting through as much stuff visually uh, as they would like. Um, one thing that Sean will go into detail on in his presentation tomorrow night about the new realities of email marketing uh, is that you know even major providers like eye contact uh, and constant contact have experienced about a 20 percent drop in their delivery rates because of these changes in the spam filters. So it's hitting everybody uh, unless you've got one of those big expensive marketing accounts. Um, and so it, we're really advising right now to just take all of the, uh, all of the um, images out of anything that you send out. Okay. Uh, and you can do other things with it. Uh, you, you can do a table layout like this uh, with colored text and colored backgrounds and, and, you know, whatever text you want, whatever links you need. Um, and hang on, let me change this. This is actually a client of ours. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, you can do something like this uh, and, and have it work just fine. You know, if I wanted to give this a background. That, now, if you need help setting up a, a table like this in, for your newsletters, we have templates and we can set that up for you for free. We just need to know that you want it and, and we can make sure the colors match the colors of your website so that you get a, some branding there. 
uh, but you know it's a good idea to put your organization uh, name at the top uh, and if you have uh, a special name for your newsletter um, uh, you know you can do that as well uh, you just wouldn't want to use a logo image file or anything like that. Uh, we do have a lot more flexibility right now on the fonts that we, we have available for you to use. Okay, and, and sizes are in points now, which is really convenient. Uh, so that's nice. But, um, you know, if I wanted to do something like this, I can make it look pretty good uh, just as it is and, and then maybe color the background. Um, a little bit let's uh, let's go to the cell menu now when you're when you're working in a table we're gonna get some of the table basics I'm really looking forward to redoing uh, the webinar that I do on working with tables in this new system because a lot has changed and improved in the way that our tables work uh, and a good newsletter is going to use tables to organize your information so that it's laid out attractively um, uh, something like this. Now, uh, I've seen successful emails that don't use tables, uh, you know, just presenting your information in, in paragraphs with subheadings and things like that is just fine. Um, it, it really also depends on your market. You know, if you just want a simple message, um, those always deliver really easily and, and they'll, they'll go through nicely. Um, but uh, let's take a look. I, if I wanted to uh, color, change the color of the background, uh, of this header area, for example. Um, first of all, uh, what I did there, I clicked and held my mouse here just somewhere in that cell. And then I dragged down while still holding it, and it ends up highlighting that cell and the ones below in that row down there. And then I continue holding and drag back up until this one is the only one that remains highlighted. Okay, because this is the one that I want to change the background for. So with it highlighted like that, I'm going to right click in that area and hang on just a second for me. Um, oh, Bunny had a question about the, uh, the template that I mentioned. Um, you can request a template. Just send an email to support at website support dot info. And in the, in, the, uh, in the subject line, just say email template and then your website name and then just say you want a, a table template in your news in your email marketing and we'll be able to take care of that for you alright so I've right clicked in my highlighted cell I'm gonna go to the cell menu and we're gonna go to cell properties okay so let's click on cell properties and I can choose or I used to be able to choose a background for it in here um, hang on. <laughs> Looks like that hasn't moved over to the new system. That's that's interesting that I haven't seen that before. Um, in that case, I'm probably going to need to do it in the code, and that's not going to be good. So we'll probably want to set this up for you, uh, so that so that the uh, the code there will look or the um, the colors will will work for you. We just need to know what colors you want to work with, and I'm not going to go into the code issues right now. Um, that's actually disappointing that I can't uh, can't edit that cell background color from there. Uh, we used to be able to do that. Um, I'm wondering if I could just do it with the color picker. Let's see if I can do this. That would be nice if I could. Well, it changed my text color for me. Uh, Apparently, there's no way to actually just select the, the cell. Um, let me see if there's nothing in there, if I can do that. Hang on. If, I hope you don't mind if I play a little bit. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's still going to select the, the cursor, which is going to have the code for it. So let's just rep replace that. All right. So... Um, when you're composing your message, a uh, couple of things, uh, there are a couple of rules that you're going to want to follow. Now, um, a lot of our clients are in the quilting industry and the fabric industry and, and like that. Uh, and in the quilting industry, for those of you who aren't familiar, 
uh, there are a lot of different styles of quilting that involve working with strips of fabrics. And so a lot of quilting uh, organizations that I've worked with uh, will do what they call a strip club. And that's kind of a tongue-in-cheek way of, of having a club that, that works with, you know, strip and, and piecing quilting. So <laughs> putting something like a strip club meeting or, or come to our strip club in the subject line, uh, the spam filters are not going to understand that that's about fabric strips. They're going to think it's about, uh, you know, other things, and they'll, they'll flag your message, and I've seen people get blocked and blacklisted for putting that in the subject line. So um, you have to be careful about the kind of language that you use. Uh, it's okay to joke around, of course, but, um, you know, anything that's, uh, that's you know, off-color like that, uh, I would not put in a subject line. Um, and I, you know, I, you, you shouldn't have to rename your club uh, <laughs> or anything, but... Um, you, you might make a name for it, uh, or at least a, an understood name, so that people can get email about it from you, because uh, they, they will block that out. Um, down in the body, uh, you have a little bit more leeway, um, but you know, up in the subject line, you need to be very careful. So that's one rule to follow, is, is be careful about off-color language. Um, that you, you might get filtered out for that. Um, Another thing that you don't want to do is something that spammers like to do. Um, something like this. Uh, you've probably seen this. Uh, if, you, if you have a whole bunch of punctuation that's not really doing anything but trying to draw the eye, uh, the spam filters can see that. They're very smart. Uh, they'll know what that's about, and they will filter you out 100%, absolutely. Um, just putting any, I, I would avoid any punctuation at all, uh, unless it's like a comma or a hyphen. Uh, you don't really have to have an exclamation point. Uh, if you want, I, you know, limit yourself to one. Um, for emphasis, some people put three or, or, you know, multiples, I would not do that in, in a subject line in today's email marketing world, okay? Uh, you can probably get away with one just fine, uh, and down in your, your body area, you can do really whatever you want, because, um, but, but for up in the subject line, limit your uh, punctuation to normal things like commas and, and hyphens and, and what, you know, things like that, colons. Um, also in the subject line, I would avoid typing in all caps. This is why. All right, in written form, all caps is shouting at someone. All right, and I realize for some people, your default is just using that format. But um, in, in typical written English, uh, all caps is considered shouting uh, or, you know, overly bold writing. So if you need to emphasize something, that's fine. I would not use it anywhere in the subject line. Uh, maybe just one word if you need to emphasize one word that way because you don't have the ability to bold things or italic, italicize them up here. Um, so, you know, all caps might make sense to emphasize one word but I would not do it with the entire, entire line, okay? Um, some people have even tried inserting HTML code into this, uh, this area. That just will not work, so please don't try it. Um, any kind of code that goes in here, if it was able to save and go out, the spam filters would see that there's code and not just plain text, and they would filter you out automatically. They don't like any kind of code that tries to trick them into doing things that they don't normally do. Um, spammers try that as well. So uh, keep it simple. Um, you know, this is marketing. So you want to use colorful language uh, and attractive language, things that will appeal to your target audience. Uh, you want to encourage them to click on the line that they see. So this 
this subject line really needs to be a call to action. Why should I click on this on this email newsletter? Uh, that's you, you have a few words there to tell someone why they want to do that uh, and convince them to do that. You know, and if you have a lot of loyal readers, it's easier for you than than others. If you're trying to to keep people's attention and and uh, you know, if you're especially if you're marketing something, you're you're trying to sell them something. Uh, you know, by default, they're they're going to be uh, skeptical about anything they see. So this has to win them over. So use descriptive language. Uh, use appealing things. Have a call to action. Uh, amazing finishing technique. Huge coupon to the first 20 visitors. Well, gee, I want to be one of the first 20 visitors so I can get that free coupon. Uh, you know. That's that's a call to action right there. Uh, it's appealing to a specific audience, uh, and for for this kind of market, that might be a good headline uh, if you're if you're trying to sell something. Now, for newsletters, of course, you're, those are going to be mainly informational, but you're giving information about new things that are coming, uh, maybe classes that you do, events that you hold, um, new products that you expect to be coming in. And you're trying to generate excitement and interest and, and visits uh, to your store and, and to your website, perhaps, uh, with this message. So don't forget that goal um, with your newsletters. Make sure that you're hitting the most appealing things uh, up near the top. Um, if you're featuring several things throughout the, the message, um, I would start off with an item of interest that's like a freebie. Okay, if you are doing a newsletter... I recommend doing uh, like a small article uh, or some sort of useful piece of information or something of interest. Like if you're good at writing humorously, that's awesome. You can build a huge loyal following of people just by putting a paragraph or two of a funny reading statement, you know, every time you mail one of these out each week or, or each month. Um, you're going to want to shoot for uh, at least a monthly newsletter and you don't want to mail out through this system to a single mailing list more than once a week okay if you do it more than that the spam filters don't like it uh, at the level that we operate here so be careful about that um, alright down in the body you want to make sure that you're not overusing keywords okay you don't want to flood or, or spam your own message with uh, a bunch of, you know, the word free is the one that's probably abused the most. Okay. Um, let me show you, uh, first of all, I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this template down here. Let me show you a newsletter uh, that I mail out. from a website called freequiltpatterns.info. Uh, let's go into social and email. And let's look at the templates. All right, so this is uh, an, email, an email newsletter that's done weekly. And it's done in a table. And because the website is all about free content, you're going to see the word free a lot throughout the body. Um, I try not to bludgeon it. You know, I really just one entry has the word free because the, the article has that word in it. Um, but, you know, you have this, the word free throughout this message uh, maybe five or six times. Okay. Uh, but it's not abused. All right. If I had free like every other word or a couple times each sentence, um, you know, that would get old fast. First of all, people wouldn't really like reading it. Um, and the spam filters would, you know, basically throw up flags and, and block the message. So we don't want that to happen. But where it's legitimate, uh, you know, this site is all about free content. So um, in this case, you know, the page that this is going to, going to has this in the title. So it's a valid link and a valid use of that word. All right. Down in descriptive text, I try to stay away from uh, any words that are sensational like that, 
and and abusing those you know in in the language that I use and and let me zoom in a little bit on this that the text comes out fairly small in these but uh, you know I do use words like amazing and uh, artistically and uh, let's see I think there's like excellent and great and things like I, I just use you know words like that uh, when when we're working with a particularly interesting design uh, you know this is easy and um, so I uh, you don't want to abuse sensationalizing words uh, just the same way as free like anything that's easy and uh, free and uh, wonderful or amazing or unbelievable words like that uh, spammers use those to try and get people to you know they're like easy way to make money make six hundred dollars a week with almost no effort you know stuff like that the spam filters are looking for that so um, you, you want to avoid lang language that leans in that direction um, keep your content focused on uh, you know exactly what the the information is and um, by all means use marketing language make your products sound good uh, but don't make them sound too good to be true <laughs> okay um, and I realize that's kind of fuzzy you know there are some hard and fast rules down here as well you don't want to include images in here anymore you make you want to make sure that every link that you put in here is uh, a legitimate link and that it works okay the way that you test that Let's test it. Um, now, this one won't work anymore because these uh, articles aren't actually on my homepage of that website anymore. So, um, the, the, in this case, they won't work. But at the time that I composed this message, uh, those links work just fine. Um, here's a link down at the bottom that we can use as a demonstration, the, the link to free quiltpatterns.info. So, let's say that you highlight some text and you go you right click on it you go to insert link and in this box initially it's going to be blank so you're gonna paste whatever URL that link is supposed to go to in here okay if it's a page on your website you can search for that on the server here uh, you can uh, hang on let me copy what I've got here you can click on uh, server and then go to pages and then any page that's on your website you can just click on it uh, and and go straight to it uh, and it will load what you need in there um, but once you've got it uh, click OK and then to test that link uh, well I forgot a step let's um, uh, you do want to copy the link so that you can paste it again so if I copy this and if I go to uh, to test it, I want to open a new browser in my or new tab in my browser. So I'm going to go up here to the plus tab in Firefox. I'm going to open that, uh, and then up in my address bar, I'm going to do Control V as in Victor to paste that in, and then I'm going to hit Enter. Okay, and if the link is legitimate, um, it will take you exactly where you want to go. All right, uh, so test every link this way. In, in what you're mailing out and composing uh, by doing that in the system. All right. Um, okay. Another thing that you want to be aware of when you're copying from Microsoft Word or Publisher or something like that and pasting into uh, a table like this, um, make sure that when you paste it, um, you're going to paste it as text and that's going to take out all of the background code that programs like Word and Publisher put in there. It's going to take out all of the formatting. So if that text is bold and italic and in a font called Impact, um, you know, it's going to take all of that out and just paste it in as plain text. All right. For email marketing, that is a good thing. I realize you're going to have to highlight that text and, you know, bold it and italicize it again and, and put it in whatever font uh, you're wanting. And Impact is actually a font that you can use, which is good for headlines. But um, that reformatting is a necessary step now. 
I wouldn't paste anything in without making sure this is active first. When you click on this, it's going to tell you everything's coming in as plain text um, until you toggle it off. So um, that's a good way to work in this system when you're working with email marketing just so that you don't get any background code that's going to upset those uh, spam filters. All right. Um, okay. So those are the major areas that you want to look at. Um, Sean is going to go over this in, in probably more detail tomorrow as well. Uh, he'll, he might have some things that I haven't heard yet, so I'm going to be listening to that myself. Um, but these are the things that I'm aware of. If you have any questions about what we've covered so far in this presentation, please go ahead and put those questions in now. All right, while you're working on your questions. Um, so the, the actual way to send one of these out, after you've put in your subject and built your message, um, first of all, you've got some things to consider. Do you want to add this message to your newsletter archive? Now, our system, what this means is, if you do newsletters that you want people to have access to well after you've mailed them out, just in an archive, uh, our system can archive them for you just by checking this box. It'll keep it in a module here under, under website and modules called newsletter archive. Okay, So um, if you want to do that, uh, and it's a good idea to do that if you're sending out newsletters that aren't just promotional. You know, if you have newsletters that have valuable articles or interesting text or, you know, uh, whatever, um, those make sense to add to an archive, okay? Um, and then you need to choose which mailing list you're going to send to. Um, usually that's going to be your newsletter list. Um, before you do any of that, though, you might want to do a test email, okay? If you've followed all the rules that I just went over, uh, and you run a test uh, test email, you should get through just fine. Um, our system used to provide much stronger uh, email filters than were active before, but now they're about the same. So this is a pretty accurate measure of how deliverable your message is going to be. All right, so if you try an email address, especially if it's an AOL address, a Yahoo address, an Earthlink address, I see those getting blocked a lot recently. So if you've experienced lower volume on, on your inbox in your Yahoo account, that's probably why. They're tired of getting spammed, so they, they made their filters stronger. Um, so if it doesn't come through in 10 minutes, you might just check and make sure you don't have any, uh, any weird links that, that are broken or, or you know, you check your word count, make sure you're not abusing anything. Um, some things that can count for you, okay, in, in that regard. If you have 200 words or more in the body of your message, that's a good thing. The email filters actually like that, and that will count for you. Um, having no images in uh, is a very good thing. Um, but having 200 words or more uh, is a good thing that, that you can do to improve the deliverability of your message. Um, once you've run your test, I recommend saving your template so that you can work from whatever you've done this, this time, the next time you need to get back in and do this, okay? Um, save your template and then send it, okay? And it's gonna send it out to everybody that's on that list. Um, with your... Um, with your message, there's another way that you can do the message. I didn't go over this, but I think it's worth mentioning, especially with the way things are now. Um, if you really like the idea of having a highly graphical newsletter, uh, multiple pages, uh, things like that, by all means, do that. Um, do it as a, a PDF and save that PDF uh, and then create a link in a text message mail out like this uh, that's just pure text 
and just have a link that says click here to download this month's newsletter. Okay. That's a great way to do it because you can do things like your own calendar layout in, in, in there and you can have all the images you want, whatever fonts you want to use, and PDFs. Um, they don't come into the spam filter part because uh, the, it's not actually in the message. It's just a link. Uh, and so as long as you do it that way, that's how you would do a highly graphical one. Uh, you know, you might w use Microsoft Publisher to create that newsletter, save it from there as a PDF, and then in here, uh, you could go in, you could have a, a line in here like this that says, uh, click here to download this month's newsletter. And then it's really easy now. The way the way linking works, uh, you I just uh, and I'm going over this too fast. I right click on the link that I or the text. Uh, you, it, it will start out as plain text. So you'll highlight the text. You'll right click on it. You'll go to insert link. And then uh, you know, let's say that you just composed and, and created that PDF. Okay. Uh, it's not anywhere you can link it. That's fine. From here, we can get it into the server, and we can link it. So we're going to click on this little server button, and we're going to go to our files, and we're going to upload that that uh, PDF to our uh, our documents folder. So I'm going to add a file, and let's see. Go. I've got one in here. Let's just do this one. I don't even know what it is. Um, so I'm going to double click on that. Now the size of your PDF can be up to 100 megabytes. Um, you're probably not going to be able to make a PDF that big uh, for a monthly newsletter anyway, but sometimes they can get pretty big. Uh, and then once you've got it, you'll start the upload. Uh, for most file uploads that are, are larger than a megabyte or so, it's going to take a little while for it to upload depending on your connection but once that green bar is finished it that window disappears and here's what we just uploaded and all we have to do at this point is click on it and then it's gonna load that URL in here for us uh, because we're linking to a PDF we always want that to open in a new window so we're gonna change the target to new window and then you would click OK alright so that's how you would link um, a PDF version of an, a newsletter and you really you know for the for the text part of a message like that all you're gonna need is a, a nice welcome paragraph uh, and then maybe some bullet points about the main things that you're doing uh, for the upcoming month or you know the main things you're featuring uh, just a few highlights like that and then you want the link that says hey click here to download this it doesn't have to be a big long message, uh, and it just needs to intrigue them enough to get them to click and download your your uh, highly graphical, attractive PDF. All right. Okay. If you have any questions about that part of the system, please let me know. Now, while you're working on it, you can save it as a draft, and a draft is going to stay in the system, uh, and it'll be in your um, in your list of drafts. There, there's a templates tab. And there's a drafts tab. Let me go back to the, the main body area. Here's templates and here's drafts. Okay. So drafts are saved only until you hit the send button. And then they go away. So they're just like a while I'm working on it kind of save. Okay. Um, templates are saved in the system forever. So as soon as you save a template, save it as a template, it's going to be in this list. Um, as uh, as you go and it's going to time and date stamp things um, so that's how to work with these parts of the system you can delete things from any of these uh, lists if you if you have old versions that you know you're not going to work with you can but um, you know I for this site way back when I I originally created a, a version that had images and and it would be nice and graphical and, and beautiful to look at, but 
we would probably get 20 or 25 percent less of these um, delivered. So we we went with uh, instead just the uh, just the the table with links and text is all. So uh, and these get through uh, with a high deliverability rate. So um, all right, let's take a look at some other parts of this system. Now um, we've looked at. Uh, the email part. Let's look at managing your email lists in the system. All right, so let's click on that. Um, you have the ability to bulk import them. We'll go over that here in a minute. Um, you can create as many email lists as you want in the system, and those email lists can contain some of the same email addresses. That's just fine. Uh, whatever you need to do there. When you do an upload of images, or, or, I'm sorry, when you do an upload of email addresses into one of these lists, uh, you choose which list it goes into. So you need to create a list. If you're going to create a new one and upload uh, the addresses to it, first you need to come in here and create the list, uh, and then you can add email addresses to it once it's in the system. All right. Um, so uh, also you can come in here, you can view which email addresses are on uh, a, per, a given list, and this is a big long one. The bigger your mailing list is, the longer it's going to take to load. Um, hopefully, this isn't causing our connection to be bad, but I really don't want to wait for that to load. <laughs> so I'm just going to go back. You could change the title if you need to, um, or you can delete the whole list if you want. Be careful with that one. I think it will uh, ask for confirmation that you really want to delete it. Anytime we have a delete item in the system, uh, it does that, but, uh, you know, be careful with that. <laughs> All right. If you need to find someone, uh, going here to social and email lists, and the search box here will help you find anyone. Uh, so if I search for Andy, uh, it's going to search through all of my lists and come up with every Andy that's in there are sometimes people that just have Andy somewhere in their name, like Sandy or Brandy. So um, that's a good way to find uh, someone just by name uh, that, that looks through all of the email addresses that are in there. Uh, and you can always just view all from here as well if you want. All right. Um, looking at the bulk import, okay. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, you just need to make sure, like this, uh, that the email addresses that you're putting in, uh, one address per line, no extra spaces before or after each email address, no punctuation uh, after each email address. Just uh, go to the next line, put in the next email address, and, and a hard return after each one. Uh, so if you do them that way, uh, you can upload as many as you want. I recommend doing them in batches not larger than 3,000 names at once. Okay, I've uploaded some really big email address lists in the past, and the way those work best, uh, you don't want to have more than about 3,000 at, at any one time that you upload. When you do a whole bunch of them, uh, you're going to see, and, and let me just... And it doesn't matter if you have duplicates, okay? Like I'm entering the same email addresses here multiple times. That's okay. The system will only put them in once. All right, so if I go to my, uh, well, I'm not actually going to put these in. But if I were to, um, I would check the email address or email list that I want it to go into. And let me just make a test one here. Hang on a second. I'm going to go to email list. Now, this is a good way to work in the system in general, just as a productivity tip, okay? Um, anytime you're working on something and in the middle of it, if you need to go to another part of the system, you can do that. Uh, you can click on these top items in the bar, and it won't je jeopardize what you're doing down here. And then you can right-click on these items down here and go to any part of the system you want. So I right-clicked on that, and I'm going to go to open link and new tab. Okay, and that's going to open this new tab right here, and I can go in and create a new email list called test. All right, and save that. 
All right, so now I've got a test email address list. Uh, and let's see. Let me clear these out. I'm just going to refresh this page so that we get that test list down here where I can work with it. And let's paste those back in. All right, so let's say that I'm adding these. It's going to ignore duplicates, okay? Um, if, you're, uh, if you've already got somebody signed up and you get a list of a whole bunch of people that you need to add, uh, it doesn't matter. You can, you can upload that list over the old one. It will ignore anybody that's already on there. The problem that you have in working with old email lists and just keeping those updated and uploading in here periodically, if somebody drops off your list and they can do that voluntarily, every, every mail out is going to contain a link at the bottom they can click on to manage this subscription. And from there, they can unsubscribe to the mailing list. If you're working from an old mailing list and you upload it in here periodically, you're going to be putting them back in again unless you remove it from your working list as well. And you might not know that they removed themselves. So that can be a problem. All right. Um, I recommend working only with new email addresses and uploading those at once. But when I hit the import on this, if it was a big list, it would take a while to do. And I don't know why this is doing it. It might have been the, the duplication. Um, it probably actually went in there. If we go back to the list, I think it will be in there. Um, but uh, when you're working with it, see, it, it uploaded those three email addresses, and, and I don't know why it kicked back the error. It was probably because of the duplicates. Um, if it's a big one, it, you know, it, might, uh, it might take, it, it's got that progress bar, and it can take a little while to work its way through it, especially with as many as 3,000 uh, names in the addresses. Uh, one thing that you've got to watch out for uh, when you're putting those in, um, you might have a space in an email address. That makes it invalid, okay? Um, our little text editor thing can tell that it's invalid, and it will flag it in, in red in here if it does that. What it can't tell is if somebody forgot that or if somebody did that, okay? Just looking over a list of these, you might very easily skip over and not notice that somebody left the M off of the .com uh, or, or, you know, the L off of the Gmail. Um, things like that mean it's an invalid email address. Um, and when, when that tries to go into the system, it can cause problems. So uh, it's a good idea to look over the email addresses, and I realize when you deal with thousands, that can take a long time. But it's worth taking the time to do to make sure that you don't have little guys like this that are in there wrong. You know, and uh, it's better to just remove somebody from the list if they've put their email address in wrong um, than to, uh, you know, if you don't know how something is supposed to be on the front end, for example, um, you know, Taking it out entirely will will preserve the integrity of your list, uh, but having it, you know even one in there like that is going to throw things off. All right, um, let's go over a couple more things uh, in the settings area. There are some things that you can do for your email marketing that are important. Okay, so I'm going to go into our settings here, and we're going to go into website settings and email. Okay, this is what I was talking about earlier where you can put in your from address, okay? And this should really say no reply. Um, I'm rec recommending that across the board. You don't have to have an actual email address that says no reply at your.com or, or whatever your domain is. Just putting this in here is all the system needs uh, and your your subscribers will see, hey, I can't respond to that directly. Now, if you need them to be able to respond, what you want to do is this right here. Um, I'm going to go into my email again. Let's do a new email message just as a, as a sample. So 
if I want to, let's see. If I want a link in my message that people can click on to email me, all I have to do is make a text link like this, right click and we're going to go to insert link, and a mail to link is like this in this system. Just mail to, colon, and then your email address. All right. Um, it's a good idea with with any links you put in a newsletter to have those open in a new window. Uh, but if I click OK, this will go through, and even though people can't reply to your message, this means you're one click away from them being able to mail to you if they use email like um, Yahoo Mail or, or Gmail or, or one of those online providers. And browsers like um, Firefox, even if they use a, a desktop program like Outlook, it'll pop up a list that, that lets them open a program to do email as well with any mail to link. All right. So again, the format on that type of link, mail to, no spaces, a colon, no space, and then the email address. Okay, whatever that is. Uh, that's a good one to know just in general on the website, any, anywhere you want to do a link like that, that's how you format the URL. Okay, and that's all our system needs to be able to do that. Okay, um, let's look at some settings uh, that you can do. Now, you have to have a physical marketing address for anything that you mass mail. That's a, that's a U.S., uh, it's called a can spam law about anti-spamming practices. Attaching a physical address to everything that you send out is required absolutely. So this ideally should be the physical address of your store. This can cause problems when you're, you're only an online shop and you operate out of your garage or your basement. So uh, if that's the case for you, it's, it's probably worth your time and money to go down to one of those mailbox places uh, and, and buy or rent a mailbox that would give you like a suite number and a street address that you can put in here. Um, those will be legitimate addresses that um, that can be associated with your business uh, and that that can work for the anti spam laws okay uh, and then this this area down here uh, when someone on your website signs up to join your mailing list, this is the auto response email that is sent to them okay it will come from whatever you have in here and uh, you know, this is thank you for joining our mailing list. Okay, this is what somebody gets if they sign up at FreeQuiltPatterns.info. Uh, first of all, we're giving them a free gift. Uh, thanks for signing up to to our newsletter. Here's a free quilt pattern uh, for joining up, and they can click and download a PDF of this free quilt pattern. Okay, so. Um, that's, uh, that's actually something that we set up for all of our quilting clients just as a freebie for them. But you should put something in here uh, that sincerely says thank you from you. And it's a good idea to give them an expectation of, of what they're going to be getting uh, on an ongoing basis. Like I, I probably should go on to say here, I didn't write this one, but I, I should go on to say here, uh, you know, expect weekly mail outs with the, the best uh, articles on, on quilting and and sewing topics online. You know, something like that uh, is something that we're proud of for this website. So uh, let them, give them an expectation, uh, and if you can, give them some kind of freebie. Uh, but you can, you can put all of that in here, and that's what goes out to them, all right? Uh, so those are the settings you have. Any changes you make in here, make sure that you click the Save button uh, so that those go in for you. Last thing I want to show you today, and I realize we're, we're getting near to the end of our hour here. Um, oh, wait, we've got a question. Uh, Bunny asks, if my name is not in their address book, will my name show up as no reply? Um, so if, they're not one, or if you're not one of their contacts and they're receiving your newsletter, um, your name won't show up at all. They'll, they'll only see the from address that you have in that settings area we were just looking at. 
Okay, so um, you don't have to worry about uh, about whether you're one of their contacts or not. That does help uh, if they add you as a contact. Um, the spam filters will try uh, try and treat you better that way. But um, you know the way spam filters are working now, it's not even getting to the point where they're looking at contacts. They block it from even getting on the server. Uh, if you're not formatting things correctly. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, the, the only thing that matters is the, uh, it's a good thing in that e from email address to put no reply and then whatever your .com is after the at sign. Um, and that's how they'll see, uh, that's how they'll see you. So good question. Um, all right, so I'm actually going to go back to my test site because I don't want to mess up free quilt patterns. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let me get in here. All right, so the last thing I want to show you is your sign-up form so that people can, from the website, uh, get in and join your mailing list. Now, I've got one here. Uh, the way that you add one of these, and let me just remove the stuff that's here that we don't need. Um, the way that you add one of these is with the add content link. Now, you're going to want to find the bottom-most add content link in the column that you're working on and when you add it you click add content you go down to newsletter sign up form and you click add now when you do that it lets you configure uh, what it's going to say all right you need to give them some kind of incentive for signing up for your list, okay? Some people might just inherently be interested in what you do and, and getting news from you, but most people are going to need some incentive. So tell them what they're going to get, you know? Special online-only offers, uh, so just that much is pretty good. Uh, so you could do newsletter sign-up, and then below that you could go something like this and we would want this to be smaller so um, oh, font sizes and then uh, once you've got this the way that you want it um, I recommend not asking for first and last name you can do that and I'm going to show you what it looks like but uh, if you ask for that some people just aren't going to be wanting to fill out that much just to join a mailing list uh, some people consider getting more emails a bother anyway. So the more you ask them to do, the less they're likely to do anything <laughs> is a good maxim to, to follow in this. So uh, you do want to add them to a mailing list. And so I'm going to add this one to my newsletter list. And let's save it. So when you save it, it's going to go on the page. And this is the new one that I just created. Uh, you know, having them put in their first and last name, you can capture that information if you want. Uh, some people will be willing to fill that out. You might have a very loyal following that would be happy to fill that out. The problem is our system can't really use this information. It's only going to be in there as reference for you so that, you know, you could look them up that way if you wanted to. But you're going to have their email address anyway. Um, so if you can get that information... This, I think, is an extra step that's not really worth the bother that you're putting your visitors through uh, to do it. It's going to be more attractive to them if all they have to do is put in an email address. Okay. So give them some kind of incentive. Have a, have a call to action. This one's a good one. Join a mailing list and get 20% off your order. Okay. Um, you know, and, and in your auto response message, you might have a free coupon code for your website to give them 20% off. Uh, you know their order so that's that's a good way to to get people to sign up um, you know just put them on the mailing list after that you know you're marketing to them they'll understand that, that you're going to be selling them things and um, just make sure that you give them a good expectation of how often they'll be getting those mail outs all right um, sorry for going a little bit long today uh, if you have any questions about anything that we've covered here today um, please go ahead and put those questions in now. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go and copy the link to our, um, hang on a second. Um, 
I'm going to copy the link to tomorrow night's presentation. If you want to register for that, um, I'm going to put that link up for you here in a minute uh, to where you can get at it. So let's get into my webinars. Uh, so the title of this, Changes to Effective Email Marketing You Need to Know Now with Sean Roy Lance. All right. So that's the presentation. This is the link. And I'm going to put that on a page here just for you in, uh, so that you can copy it easily. So let's go to new web page. All right, and I'm going to put it in here. Um, let's make it bigger. All right, so this is the link. Uh, it's https colon forward slash forward slash triple w four dot go to meeting dot com forward slash register forward slash and then nine one three seven nine eight five three five. I'm going to leave this up um, throughout the rest of the presentation here today. I'm not seeing any questions going in. Um, but while you're working on copying that link, that is a free presentation. It is tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. That's 8 p.m. Central, 7 or 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Pacific. So if that will work for your schedule, this is one you want to get in on because a lot has been happening in that area, and you're going to learn some new things tomorrow night that are are going to be beneficial to the way you do your email marketing. All right. Next week, um, next week's presentation is about uh, search engine optimization and web marketing and some things you can do for your website and for your content to make sure that everything on there is easily accessible to the search engines so they can index everything properly. We're going to talk about things you can do with your images to make that, that happen. Uh, things you can do with your SEO titles and descriptions for your web pages. And we're going to talk about how to use the system uh, to, to make that work for you. Now, um, we're also going to go over some free resources uh, that you can basically in your spare time just start networking yourself for free. Uh, it's just some you know work on your end if you're willing to put some elbow grease in. Um, I've got a success story on this. Um, there's a an organization out of Florida, and it's called Old South uh, Quilting and Fabrics. And Gary and Wanda are the owners of that business. They started up with us a little over a year ago, and uh, from the start, you know, they were willing to work very hard on whatever they did. They started from scratch with our system, and within about six to nine months because they were doing those active things just on the side in their spare time, uh, they have gotten a very large number uh, of hits and they get a lot of traffic to their website. They're getting good search results for the products that they sell and it's because they remain very active. So they, they're making thousands of dollars a month right now uh, just by putting in that extra effort. Uh, so it's a good thing to do. I encourage you to do it if you can. Uh, Bunny has a question. Next week, will you cover how to rename pages for SEO? I can't find that now. I, I, I will be covering that. Uh, hopefully, everybody has this link. If you, if you need it, uh, let me know if, if um, I can always come back to it. Uh, let me save this module so it's there on the page. Um, the place that you do that uh, is when you're viewing the page that you want to work with, Bunny, uh, if you go up to Website, and then there's a page settings that you see here that's not there any uh, unless you're view actually viewing a page of the site. If you go to page settings, that's where you can get to the um, uh, the SEO title for a page and the SEO description. Now the page title itself, the actual way that it appears uh, in your links and things, uh, that's something that you change somewhere else. You wouldn't do that here. Um, this is just a copy of what's in the system, I think, under navigation or under pages. So uh, we will go over all of that more next week for you, Bunny. So 
uh, keep an eye out for that. All right, it looks like we don't have any more questions. Uh, hopefully everybody was able to get uh, that link just fine and get signed up for that. Uh, I encourage you to do that if you have the time. If not, we are recording it just like we are today's session, and we'll have that up on the on the website support.info um, for you at that time.